Hey guys, welcome to Marketing 101, making the phone ring. So I'm going to go over and make this process very simple and easy for folks to understand. Um, I know you're all smart, but I wanted to really simplify this Marketing 101 module to really hone in on how common sense is not so common. And I say that because I wasted over $70,000 promoting my tax business, marketing my tax business in ways that did not make me a return on my investment. So I'm going to go over what not to do, what to do, things that worked for me um, in growing my tax business and things that did not work for me in growing my tax business. So as you can see from this first slide, what not to do, this is a picture, this CBS um, billboard that I had. So I invested um, nearly $9,000 in billboards. So I had four billboards that were humongous, that were placed um, on busy intersections and freeways. And I think I really just liked the idea that my face, there I am with my arms folded, was going to be seen by hundreds of thousands of drivers passing by. Well. It satisfied a vanity issue, but it did not satisfy my pockets because that was $9,000 of my hard-earned money that went out of the door. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, um, what to do. So this is a um, box of mailers that I mailed to each and every one of my previous clients, to each and every family member, friend, colleague, I gathered all of their um, physical addresses and I sent them my tax newsletter. So I'm going to include um, a copy of my tax newsletter, a sample copy, so you can tweak it and make it your own and use this newsletter as one of your first piece of marketing material that you send out to all of the folks that you know who already like you, who already trust you, and who you want to do business with so this helps me get you know a hundred plus clients by actually mailing them my tax newsletter telling them hey i'm in the business here's my address here's my telephone number and here's a bit of tax advice and then i also included their tax checklist so this checklist just helps facilitate them to gather all of their paperwork, all of their required documentation that they need to get their taxes prepared. So I try to, to definitely deliver some value. And I think a lot of people, you know, everything is so digital nowadays that we tend to forget about physical mail pieces. So it's nothing like receiving a piece of mail. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm always excited to get to the mailbox to figure out what someone has sent me. Um, so I definitely will utilize this marketing piece um, outside of it costing um, maybe um, about $150 for about 200 or so pieces of mail. It's definitely the return on investment because if you look at the average tax preparation fee, you're going to be charging minimum around $185 to $250. So even if you only get one client, you break even, but look how many mailers I sent out, guys. I was sending over 200 mailers to people who already know, trust, and like me. The next marketing one-on-one, making the phone ring, what not to do. So this is a picture of me and my grand opening. This is actually my second physical storefront that I had. Um, rent it out for my tax business. Now, having a physical location is great, which is why I have a what to do on the right side of the picture. Uh, but the left side of the picture is actually my physical storefront. Um, I had a lot of overhead associated with this property. So not only was I paying $1,000 per month in rent, which equated to $12,000 just in rent alone, um, and if you're making taxes, you're making, you know, your first year $40,000, $50,000, you don't want to have to spend $12,000 of that money just in a physical space. So this was a very unnecessary expense. 
um, it, 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 it you, it's not really needed. You don't need to have your name, you know, your business brand name and your logo plastered on a building because people aren't just going to walk off the street and come to you for their taxes. Like taxes is a very personal um, endeavor. You know, it's, it's very private and people just don't walk into an unknown um, name brand. Now, if you have a name brand and you have, you know, a billion dollars in marketing that you can funnel advertising dollars into, such as H&R Block or Jackson Hewitt or Liberty Tax, which is a top three tax franchises, then having your name plastered like this is not going to be an efficient way to gain business. So one, yes, I did um, get walk-in business from having my physical storefront, but it was nowhere near the amount of overhead that I was spending. So again, not only was I spending $1,000 a month in rent, but I also had to pay for my electricity bill, my gas and heating bill, as well as my water bill along with internet and cable. So guys, I was spending another almost $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month just to keep up with this stupid building that I'm so happy to be standing out in front of <laughs> with my grand opening sign. Oh my God, like literally I wasted 24 grand just in this silly building. So don't do it guys. Now this picture on the right with the red furniture overlooking um, this nice little view, this office was $650 a month, but it included everything. All of my utilities was included, they had free Wi-Fi, and literally the only thing that I paid was $650 a month. Now this is still a lot of money for your first year in the business, and I would implore you to find a very tiny, small office that um, you um, and another person, maybe you know three people can fit into and pay, try to get it under $400 per month. For under $400 per month will be your sweet spot because that means you just really need to do one tax return per month. Uh, you do 12 of those to put aside for your rental expense. So this is a very achievable goal. This won't break the bank and you have a nice secure place where you can file and prepare taxes and meet clients. I would not advise you to prepare taxes out of your home unless you are doing taxes completely electronically and you are not meeting face-to-face -face with your clients. If you are meeting face-to-face -face with your clients, then I would implore you to have a small office to meet that client at because it just, one, builds up credibility, um, and two, it just feels better to both you and the client that this is a legitimate and true business. So you don't have to go all out and get a storefront like this gal on the left standing outside in the cold. Um, you do need to get a nice, small, quaint little space to repair taxes out of that's a couple of hundred dollars a month. Um, and that's going to, you know, have everything included so you aren't breaking the bank with this astronomical expense. Next, Marketing 101, making the phone ring, what not to do. So on the left side here, this flyer, Dynamite Tax and Financial Service, this is the actual flyer that I mailed out to about 10,000 um, homes. I received a handful of clients from this marketing um, it did not make me my money back. Um, a lot of people I found just throw these flyers away, quite frankly. Um, they're pretty good for pizza places and other certain service business, but not so much for taxes because, again, taxes is more of a personal, private, you know, you want to, you know, people have to know that you're credible enough to do business with you. So this type of advertising just doesn't bring in a lot of people. Now on the right, what to do, these lovely ladies on my right, um, these were my, um, pretty much my word of mouth affiliate marketers. So I, I taught them all how to how to prepare taxes. And I said, hey, listen, I'm starting my tax business. If you guys want to make some extra cash on the side, I would teach you how to prepare taxes, 
However, you don't have to prepare taxes. All you have to do is refer to me, all of your friends, all of your family, all of your colleagues, pretty much everyone you know who needs to file taxes. And I would do all the hard work and you would still get paid 50% of the tax preparation fee. So these ladies were making money hand over fist by referring me all of their friends and family. And they were single handedly the reason why I made you know, that helped me generate over $100,000 in tax income. So I would definitely write down at least 10 names right now of all the people who you think of that would be open to an opportunity to making an extra income during tax season and who also have a great sphere of influence. Somebody who, when they say go um, or when they say jump, their friends say how high. So you definitely want to have somebody with influence and um, somebody who actually can actually refer those people to you and they will listen. So summary, do mail out to everyone you know telling them you are in business. Do email and inbox via Facebook all of your friends, family, and colleagues that you are in business. Do enlist the help of your friends, past colleagues, or pretty much anyone with influence to be your personal sounding board and have them consistently refer their sphere of influence. And lastly, do ask each and every person you speak to for referrals. So this is everyone, I mean, any pretty one, anyone that you pretty much meet is going to be a potential client because they probably have a filing requirement. So you just want to make sure that you are letting everyone know that you're in the business and what you do. You don't necessarily have to say, hey, come to me to get your taxes done, but let them know the services that you provide and let them know that you are in the tax preparation business and you do have a specialized skill in that. And the, the, the questions will flow after that. If you find that the person is asking more detailed questions, more tax specific questions, more personal questions, kindly smile and thank them and say, you know what, that's a very involved question. How about we set an appointment and I can answer that thoroughly at that time. So don't forget to ask and tell everyone that you are in the business and to ask for referrals from your friends, past colleagues, and your um um family